Hey guys, Nick here from Tech 2020, and today I feel like talking about computers. The ones made of carbon nanotubes, of course. Let's get started. So, according to David Talbot of MIT Technology Review, researchers at IBM have managed to assemble 10,000 carbon nanotube transistors on a silicon chip, with silicon transistors approaching fundamental limits to continued miniaturization, the IBM network points towards a new possible way of continuing to produce smaller, faster, more efficient computers. So what's he saying? Really, carbon nanotubes perform superior in all ways than their silicon counterparts. How much better exactly? Well, up to three times as fast while only using one-third the power. Furthermore, at only two nanometers apart, for those who don't know, one nanometer is equivalent to one billionth of a meter, we can now fit far more carbon nanotubes on a single chip than we ever could with silicon ones, providing for an unparalleled amount of performance. Check out this awesome video by Nova to see how they work. I'm right. They're about a billion times smaller. Nanotubes are made of carbon atoms arranged in a rolled up chicken wire like structure. Besides nanotubes, there are other forms of pure carbon, like diamond and graphite, the stuff of pencil lead. Nanotubes get their strength from the extremely strong bonds between carbon atoms. These carbon nanotubes can have spectacular mechanical properties, spectacular strength, and very high toughness. The name is apt. Each nanotube looks like a tall, thin bamboo tree, hollow inside. So thin that if you could scale one up until it was one inch wide at the base, the top of it would reach two miles into the sky. But to effectively use this technology to its maximum potential, we would require several billions of nanotube transistors on a single chip, a major engineering effort. To deal with this issue, scientists are building trenches on top of these silicon chips and filling them with nanotubes and adding metal contacts to test their performance. In the primary samples they made, they're about 150 nanometers apart, but they'll have to get closer. A lot closer if they hope to beat our current silicon ones. Finally, because of their tremendous potential, scientists are finding ways to create ultra-pure supplies of these semiconducting nanotubes to prevent any from failing. Though this technology is about 5 to 10 years away, we are reassured by Supriti Guha, who says that nanotubes are an excellent candidate to keep the scaling of microelectronics technology going. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.